Hello friends, today let's learn about Milwaukee Shoulder Syndrome. Milwaukee Shoulder Syndrome is actually a rare shoulder entity. This entity was first described in the year 1981, in which there was a case series reported with four elderly women suffering from this condition, which was characterized by recurrent effusion of bilateral shoulder joint associated with rotator cuff damage and severe arthropathy of bilateral shoulder. So that was the classical manifestation of uh, all these four patients. And in the year 1982, they started describing this condition much more often and nearly six, uh, another case series with six elderly women, again, again it is women, uh, involved with this uh, condition and this paper reported that this condition is not a slowly progressive condition it's a rapidly progressive shoulder arthropathy which is um, aggressively causing severe arthritic damage to the shoulder joint and in the 1983 uh, they started demonstrating the reason and they started demonstrating the deposition of uh, basic calcium phosphate crystals like uh, calcium hydroxyapatite inside the synovial fluid with this background the disease started making a huge impact into the field of orthopedics and we started learning more about this disease. So coming on to the epidemiology and risk factor, from the basic background uh, details what I said, it is very clear that it is a disease of an elderly individual and very common among female population. The ratio is 4 is to 1, 4 female for every single male individual getting damaged. Okay, And with related to the joints involved, Shoulder joint is the most commonly involved joint, next only to shoulder, maybe knee, but you can't restrict this disease only to just shoulder or knee, basically it can affect any joint for that matter. With related to shoulder, usually it affects unilaterally and the dominant limbs are affected very commonly when compared to the non-dominant limb. But if at all it is bilateral, again the damage and severity is more on the dominant side. So, what could be the possible reason or the risk factor? The most commonly accepted uh, reason and risk factor are minimal injury or like trauma and overuse are the uh, usually attributed cause. But otherwise, deposition of calcium pyrophosphate crystal, neuroarthropathy, which means short cuts joint or dialysis arthropathy or uh, hyperparathyroidism induced arthropathy and sometimes may be associated with a denervation. And remember the four characteristic features that you should never forget with related to the Milwaukee shoulder syndrome are it is highly destructive, it will have a calcium phosphate crystalline arthropathy, effusions are classical feature and remember uh, for the effusion you may do uh, arthrosynthesis and then send the sample uh, for evaluation and during evaluation you will find it is non-inflammatory it is non-inflammatory why this point is very important because rheumatoid arthritis is an inflammatory arthropathy while this is a non-inflammatory arthropathy so this point is important there will be an effusion but on analysis it will be actually be a non-inflammatory effusion so it is destructive it will be having a lot of calcium deposition calcium phosphate deposition and the effusions are non-inflammatory and last it is associated with a rotator cuff damage. The pathology is very simple because of deposition of basic calcium phosphate crystals into the joint the lysosomes are activated lysosomal enzymes along with collagenase and protease started damaging the joint especially the cartilage the capsule the periarticular tissues and especially the rotator cuff also that's how uh, the disease progresses patient will classically have excruciating pain why this finding is very important because another close differential diagnosis for this condition is charcot arthropathy which is actually painless condition and milwaukee shoulder syndrome is usually a painful condition uh, so patient presents with pain as I said, effusion, so patient will have swelling and uh, sometimes this effusion uh, are recurrent in nature and the range of movements are completely restricted and painful. Why? Because of, uh, uh, it is because of the involvement of the capsule, because of the periarticular tissue damage, the cartilage damage, the excruciating arthritis and also the rotator cuff damage. And how we are going to assess such patients? So, let's take an x-ray. X-ray finding will classically mimic that of an osteoarthritis. So, the x-ray finding will include reduction in the joint space, there will be sclerosis, there will be cyst formation, destruction of the cartilage and osteophytes, loose body presence 
and also because of the deposition of calcium phosphate crystals there is a chance for increased calcification around the joint can be demonstrated especially in the capsules okay ultrasound can demonstrate effusion while MRI can help us in demonstrating the rotator cuff damage. Coming on to the synovial fluid analysis. This point, uh, this slide I feel is very, very important because most of the time when we are reading during undergraduation, Milwaukee's shoulder syndrome, we read it as a calcium pyrophosphate pseudo gout of shoulder joint. It is not exactly true. Uh, calcium pyrophosphate deposition may be an associated risk factor, but basic crystals which are deposited in this condition are not uh, the calcium pyrophosphate more than calcium pyrophosphate the crystals deposited in this condition is calcium hydroxyapatite these crystals of hydroxyapatite are not or cannot be de demonstrated with a polarized microscope so in that way the fluid analysis is very very important but grossly uh, the fluid will look more of hemorrhagic non-inflammatory and positive for calcium apatite crystals uh, maybe you, it may be associated with the calcium pyrophosphate but predominant crystals uh, which are demonstrated in this condition are calcium basic calcium phosphate which is cal calcium hydroxyapatite leukocytes counts are characteristically low this point is very important because it is non-inflammatory condition so the leukocytes count has to be low with related to crystals it is very difficult to diagnose because of the small size and it is non-birefringent in nature. Regular polarized light microscope examinations are less helpful. If at all you want to demonstrate it, you can use a stain called alzerin red stain. With alzerin red stain, you can demonstrate these crystals like a shiny coins with a halo of orange red. Coming on to the treatment aspect of this condition, the most important treatment is rest and you can start NSAIDs. If the pain is not subsiding with the NSAIDs, then you can put the patient with colchicine. Mostly with colchicine, most of the patient will have a symptomatic relief. Other than that, because of the effusion, there may be a requirement for orthrocentesis and orthroplasty may be needed if there is a severe damage to the periarticular structure and the, uh, the joint cartilage and the patient is having a severe arthropathy in that case the patient may get benefited because of an arthroplasty so coming on to the summary it is a disease of elderly female individual usually affecting shoulder joint commonly unilateral sometime bilateral recurrent effusion and pain are the classical features and orthrocentesis will show non-inflammatory parameters but it can you can demonstrate some amount of crystals and the crystals are usually calcium phosphate basic calcium phosphate which is calcium hydroxyapatite rather than uh, uh, calcium pyrophosphate these uh, crystals are usually non-birefringent so quite difficult to demonstrate but better uh, uh, with alzerin red stain and if you take a radiological evaluation x-ray will be mimicking exactly that of an osteoarthritis but it will be more severe and rapidly progressive and mri can help you in assessing the status of the rotator cuff damage mostly uh, the patients require uh, rest, NSAIDs and some amount of colchicine with orthrocentesis. If the damage is very severe, then you may consider orthroplasty. Thank you.